When was the last time you experienced silence? Research published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. Noise pollution may have an effect on your heart health. Silence. A problem of the past. Solved today by the phones that we keep in our pockets and the headphones that we keep on us at all times. We are constantly bombarded by noise, stimuli, and more from everywhere. Phones, TVs, cars, we are surrounded by it, forced to endure it. Yes, these devices have made our lives better, but at what cost? We are always connected, forced to respond, to always be available to your job, to your friends, your family, tugging and pulling at you. We built a world absent of silence, and in doing so, we built a world absent of introspection. You are never able to get away from it. Buzzing, ringing, pinging, it's always there. But you chose this. You chose a life of chaotic noise, a life of distractions. Me, I want something more. I come out to the woods here when I just need some silence, when I need to get away. When was the last time you had 10 minutes of just silence? No screens, no phones, no tablets, no Playstations, no music, no podcasts, no AirPods in your ears. You just had 10 minutes of silence where you could listen to the water rush, hear the birds chirp, listen to the wind rustle around the trees. When was the last time you had that? Because unless you're choosing to do it, it's not gonna happen naturally anymore. It's redundant to say that we live in a culture of overstimulation. It's much more than that. It's much more than always having access to music, podcasts, videos, movies, whatever it may be, through your phone, through your car, when you're in the store. On average, we touch our phones 2,614 times in one day. The average American will spend seven hours and four minutes each day in front of a screen. A lot of people have jobs where this is sort of just not preventable because you need a job to make money. But then after work, they'll spend even more time on the couch in front of a TV, on a phone, playing video games, all these types of things. 49% of zero to two year olds spend time on a smartphone. This is the most egregious one to me. I have a very young child and I will never let them anywhere near my phone. We don't watch TV together. We just play. We just we just play with their toys because it's way more fun than just sitting them down in front of a TV and say, sit down, listen, shut up, and watch this TV. Altogether, all these trends show is that people are becoming more and more and more dependent on their smartphones. They're becoming more addicted to their smartphones. And I think it's a much broader problem than just smartphone usage. It's that they don't do anything else. They spend all their time on Twitter, on Reddit, on these forums where they go crazy, where they get in these echo chambers and they just, they start thinking crazy thoughts. They never go onto the real world and challenge their ideas. They never just sit down and think about a problem they have in their life. I am fortunate enough to have picked up running and I don't listen to music most of the time. If you ever see me run, you probably won't see headphones in. Occasionally I will, but for the most part, I like to spend an hour or two hours just running and just in silence. Just my feet hitting the pavement and I get to think. Every video idea you've ever seen on this channel has come from running, come from the silence of running. And I like to think that some of the, the ideas that I come up with are pretty good. And I know what I want for myself. I want a better life. I want to live better. I want to break free from the chains of smartphones and of modernity, which is why I use an iPhone 6S. I have intentionally downgraded this phone because I don't want to be stuck using the latest and greatest and be addicted and sucked into it. I've used this phone now for two weeks. Absolutely love it. Check out a video I have linked below on my other channel talking about downgrading this phone. But for me, it ultimately always comes down to the quote from Henry David Thoreau. I went to the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and to see if I could not learn what I had to teach and not when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I wanted to live deep and suck out all of the marrow of life. To live so sturdily and Spartan-like as to put to rout all that was not life. Now obviously I'm not expecting you to go build a cabin on a lake and live there without talking to anybody for an extended period of time. But I would suggest that you try to live life more deliberately. Instead of letting life happen to you and just sort of going through the motions, wishing for Friday, dreading Monday, I would really suggest that you try to suck the marrow out of life, out of the bones of life. It's a little corny, but it's a, it's a wonderful quote. I mean, it's one of my favorite quotes because it's a good reminder that you should be living life more deliberately. Most people don't. I know oftentimes I don't. You get stuck in the rhythm of life and you forget to live it deliberately because you only have a limited amount of time on this earth. So you should try to spend it wisely. There's another quote that appears really early on in Walden and is the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. It's my favorite quote. I have it written in the front of my journal because it is the most meaningful quote to me. 
I don't want to live a life of quiet desperation, and I don't think you should either. At the end of the day, don't waste your life. Come out here, come out to the woods to find yourself, get away from it all, and experience some silence.